Hello, welcome to Cornerstones of Math. Last week, I have released this video, which you can check in the description, where I have shown you that square root of 81 equals 8 plus 1, and 81 is the only two-digit number that satisfies this property. The positive square root of the number equals the sum of digits of that number. In that video, I have used some basic theory of quadratic equation to prove that, but many viewers pointed out that the most efficient way is to simply test all two-digit perfect squares, since there exist only six of them. And you can easily find that 81 is in fact the only two-digit number whose square root equals the sum of its digits. Although this bashing method doesn't allow us to learn how to deal with quadratic equations with integer roots, it is indeed the fastest way to do it, and some of the viewers wondered if we can expand this problem to have more digits. In that spirit, here I will use the similar method to find all four digit numbers x, y, z, w, satisfying the property square root of x, y, z, w equals x, y plus z, w. Here I used bar over the characters to indicate that x, y with a bar means two digit number with tens digit x and ones digit y, not the product of x and y. Of course, you can think of trivia or boring examples like square root of 0, 0, 0, 0001 equals 0, 0 plus 0, 01, which is not even a four digit number really, but are there actual proper four digit numbers? Well, let's find out. The reason why I chose this pattern is that it still only requires two variables. Any other patterns involving three or more variables make the equations extremely complicated, and I don't think I will ever deal with them in the future. But for this one, since we have only split the numbers in two, we can write the equation using only two variables, such as square root of AB equals A plus B, where A and B now can have two digits maximum. That is, from 0, 0 to 99. Then we can write the number as 100A plus B. So square root of 100A plus B equals A plus B. So by squaring both sides, we have 100a plus b equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And let's rearrange this as a quadratic equation of a, which is a squared, then let's write it as 2 times b minus 50a, then plus b squared minus b equals 0. If we use the quadratic formula, then we have a equals minus 2b minus 50 plus minus square root of 4 times b minus 50 squared minus 4 times b squared minus b divided by 2. By the way, the reason why I wrote this as 2 times b minus 50 is because when we know that the coefficient of the linear term is even, then the quadratic formula becomes simpler we can guarantee that 2 in the denominator gets cancelled out. So in the numerator, we cancel out this 2, and inside the square root, these 4s must be cancelled. This happens when this coefficient is even, so we simply have minus b minus 50 plus minus square root of b minus 50 squared minus b squared minus b. And if we expand, then we have b squared minus 100b plus 2500 minus b squared plus b. So this b squared nicely get cancelled out. So we have minus b minus 50 plus minus square root of 2500 minus 99b. Since a is integer, the inside of the square root part must be perfect square. That is, 2500 minus 99b equals k squared for some non-negative integer k. Also, since a and b are real numbers, the inside of the square root must be non-negative. So we have 2500 minus 99b is non-negative, which gives b is less than 
2500 divided by 99, which is 25 point something. So b is a non-negative integer satisfying this inequality, but this still leaves too many possible candidates for b. So let's use something else. Notice that from here, we can rearrange into b equals 2500 minus k squared divided by 99, and the numerator can be factored into 50 plus k times 50 minus k, and the prime factorization of 99 is 3 times 3 times 11. And we can use the condition that b must be an integer to find the suitable integer values for k. It is also beneficial to use the condition that b must be non-negative, so that 2500 minus k squared is greater than or equal to 0, and since we let k as a non-negative integer, we have k greater than or equal to 0 and less than 50. We can narrow down the values for k using the fact that 50 plus k times 50 minus k must be a multiple of 11. In this way, we can find some small values of k that make either 50 plus k or 50 minus k the multiple of 11. For example, the smallest value of k that make 50 plus k the multiple of 11 is k equals 5, and for 50 minus k, the smallest value is k equals 6. And we can find larger values by simply keep adding 11 to those values, which gives 16, 27, 38, and 49, you know, because k cannot exceed 50, and from here we have 17, 28, 39, and 50. From here we can rule out invalid cases that do not make 50 plus k times 50 minus k a multiple of 9. For example, if k equals 5, then b equals 55 times 45 divided by 3 times 3 times 11, and 55 is divisible by 11, and 45 is divisible by 9, so we have integer value for b, hence k equals 5 is a valid case. But if we try the next value, which is k equals 16, then we have b equals 66 times 34 divided by 3 times 3 times 11, and here 11 divides 66, but 6 times 34 is not a multiple of 9, so we don't have an integer value. Hence, k equals 16 is an invalid case. If we do this, we can rule out these values, hence the only valid cases are k equals 5, 49, and 50. But we can also rule out k equals 50, because it simply gives b equals 0, and thus a equals 50 plus minus square root of 2500, so 50 plus minus 50, which is 0 or 100, which are both invalid cases. For other cases, if k equals 5, then b equals 25, and a equals, now we have 25 plus minus square root of 2500 minus 99 times 25 simply gives 25, so 25 plus minus 5, which is 20 or 30. And when k equals 49, then b equals just 1, and a equals now 49 plus minus square root of 2500 minus 99, so 2401, and square root of 2401 is 49, so we have 0 or 98, and since 0 is an invalid value for a, only a equals 98 is valid. Therefore, the possible pairs of a, b are 20, 25, 30, 25, and 98, 1, which corresponds to three cases, square root of 20, 25 equals 20 plus 25, square root of 30, 25 equals 30 plus 25, and square root of 98 or 1 equals 98 plus 1. And that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in another video.